When talking about science and religion, there's always a constant argument where science is better than religion, or religion is better than science, or the two can never coexist with one another. And I find that hard to believe, because I think that both science and religion are working towards the same goal of answering the questions of the universe, like why are we here, what's the meaning of life, what's the purpose of our existence, is the Big Bang real? Um, did God create us in six days and take the seventh day off, like it's stated in the book of Genesis? I mean, there's a bunch of arguments and topics and conversations going on about science and religion, and if the two are basically opposite ends of the spectrum or can come together and coexist with one another and potentially work together to find the answers of the universe. Now, throughout this course, we learn about a bunch of different topics, a bunch of different scientists, heard different stories, um, found new evidence, research, uh, listened to religious people, did experiments, etc., etc. And throughout this course, I think that we can come to the conclusion that science and religion can coexist with one another. And with this being said, I think that we can prove that human beings are both material and spiritual beings. What I'm trying to explain is that human beings are made up of physical entities and spiritual entities. So when I hear are human beings material, spiritual, or both, the first thing that comes to mind is mind versus a brain. The brain is something tangible that we can touch, see, feel study and we know it exists because we've done research on it we've dissected it we inspected it but the mind is something we can't see and we know it's there because it's sort of like our consciousness of telling us what's right and wrong um good from evil um bad from good i mean when thinking about the mind it's and consciousness and our moral compass, we know it's there, but we can't physically touch it. So where does that lead us to? It leads us into this discussion of whether or not human beings are both material or spiritual. And I still, I believe that they're both. Uh, so what I'm trying to explain is that human beings are both material and spiritual. What does that mean? It means that humans are physically are physical tangible beings that you can touch, see, smell, taste, listen to, etc, etc. And this can be proven. Hmm. So where does this lead us to? So when I'm talking about are humans being spiritual, material, or both, I'm arguing that they are both because the human and any living organism has a mind, which is a spiritual aspect, and the brain, which is a material or physical aspect. But what I mean by this is the mind, the consciousness, and a moral compass are things that we internally have but cannot physically see or study or touch. And I think that it's important to understand that those are different from like our brain and our physical body and our hearts and our blood and the cells and materials that we are made up of and not just us but every living entity what i mean by this is that the mind in its own is something that we can't see but the brain is something we can see now if you were to take a look at this image right here this image right here you'd see that the mind and the brain are two different things, indicating that spiritual and material are two different things. But put them together, and you make up both the material and spiritual human being. So to further understand this, I interviewed a few of my friends to kind of explain what their th thought process is behind this question. And I kind of argue or like, talk with them about how human beings are both 
but from their responses, you can tell that they're a little bit iffy. And keep in mind that these people did not take this course and aren't that religious people or that scientific, that much of a scientific person. So they're just doing, answering this question based on their own personal experiences, what they believe in and what they know. So the first person I interviewed is Ryan Ng, and this is what he thought of the question, and this is his response to the, is humans spiritual, material, or both? Are human beings material, spiritual, or both? Um, like, is like a good, like, do I have to choose between the three? Because I honestly feel like, um, like the question is like, I feel like that's a very ambiguous question. It's like, the question is like, an, it's going to be an I don't know question. This might sound like really like harsh, but like, I feel like a lot like this question and like, it's kind of like a waste of time to like ponder on these questions. Don't you think? Because we will never know the answers for as long we're too early in the history of human like in the history of human race to to fully answer that question and like 100 percent know the answer right there maybe there will be a time in history where technology and and humans have advanced far enough for us to understand a question of that kind of like that advanced question but right now like how can we answer that you know well i think i should also bring up the point that um there actually have been studies like scientific studies about people experiencing like supernatural and like spiritual things and in one of the articles we actually read for this class uh they talked about like near-death experiences so you know how yeah. people say like, oh, my whole life, life flashed before my eyes, before like that car was about to hit me or like be right, right, right about when I was about to die. Like I had the uh, moment of clarity where it's like, I know my purpose yeah. in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in this article, we talked about how like all these different people experienced like a spiritual aspect in their life that they never thought could exist. So like a lot of them, while saying that, like, when they're, like, dying or dead or, like, being operated on, uh, there are story, like, cases where some people were able to, like, physically, like, see their body. They are sort of like that. Like an out-of-body experience? Yeah. So they are able to, so those people were, were having those, like, types of experiences where they were, like, they were able to see the people that were uh, performing surgery on them and they were able to see like exactly what they were doing, hear what they were saying. And then like when they woke up, they were able to recall everything that like happened in the emergency room. Mm -hmm. Like even one person, if I remember correctly, experienced like hearing, was like completely unconscious, had no idea what was going on, but was able to recall like conversations that the doctors and surgeons were having and like the music that was playing and she was able to recall like every single detail that they were talking about even though she wasn't like physically there her spirit was there so it they're kind of showing that like there is a spiritual aspect that is being proven but there's just not enough evidence to like back it up and support it you know but I mean, if you think about it, like the mind versus the brain, or like consciousness versus the brain, or like your soul versus your physical body, yeah, then you can kind of narrow it down to like, okay, so here are some like pieces of evidence that are presented to me and like talked about being studied and all that stuff. And then you can go from there and say, well, well, since the human body is, like, physical, because we can, like, physically touch it, so it's, like, materialistic, we can use our senses to determine, like, what it looks like, what it smells like, taste, touch, 
and all that stuff. But our yeah. soul, I feel like it's something that you can't use your like general five senses to like. I know do- what you mean. Hmm? I know what you mean. I don't know. I guess like if I had to, if I had to choose between the three, I'd say both. Um, but I don't know. It's kind of like, um, well, like religious people would think that it's more, or would lean more towards like a spiritual side. And then like atheists would lean more towards the physical side. Right. Yeah. Our job right now is just to find answers. Right. And I, and that, that, I guess that's why I said in the beginning, like pondering upon this stuff is kind of, um, a waste of time so in that sense this material and spiritual thing i think spiritual is going to be a part of material although i i think those words are quite um ambiguous i don't know i i guess those words um different words should be used So after interviewing my friend, I feel like I was able to gain a better understanding on whether humans are spiritual, material, or both. I think when he said that this type of question is a little ambiguous, I do agree with him to a certain extent, as there are no right or wrong answers to these types of questions. It's just answers based on your own personal experience, beliefs, and knowledge. But I do think that if you do simplify it, though, that you can see that humans are both spiritual and material as it was sort of talked about in our conversation. I think it's important to have an open mind about these questions so you can uh, gain a better understanding of the topic, as well as looking at the question from a different point of view. I think that when answering these types of open-ended questions, you shouldn't just force your views and opinions onto somebody else and have a closed mind about it. Because then it's trying to look like you're the only one who can be right or your answer is the only right answer, which is not true in most cases. I think that having an open mind and having a casual conversation about this with whoever you're talking to at the moment is more beneficial than just saying and arguing like, no, my point of view is right, my answer is right, you're wrong. I think that's more detrimental than beneficial to society itself and not just the conversation but just in life in general.